First of all, all I have to say is I've heard about this extensively before and doing a little bit of research caught my eye again. But anyway, John Howard Griffin, the white man who literally darkened his skin black for six weeks in order to see how it was to be black in the Deep South. In my opinion, this is very interesting, but the most interesting thing about it is what all drove him to do this. He did this in 1959 during the part two of slavery, better known as the Jim Crow era, which was crazy. It came to light in 1961 through his book and in 1964 through the film. So to me, I wanted to find out what drove him to do this in looking at the outcome of it 62 years later. There's not much to speak about when it comes to his early childhood life other than the fact that his mother was a trained pianist and his father was a radio personality. Now from what I read and researched, in a nutshell, Mr. Howard, who lived in Texas, constantly heard about the wrongdoings and mistreatments of blacks in America. And the straw that broke the camel's back was the rise in suicidal rates that he read about in newspapers and wanted to learn firsthand about the difficulties of being black. So he went through a surgery of ultraviolet radiation combined with oral medication designed to darken his skin pigmentation. Let me just say this. I give this man his credit for his bravery because in my humble opinion, during this time period, that's when blacks in America dealt with real racism and equality. Not that watered down stuff that we deal with today. Don't get me wrong. Racism still exists, definitely. But back then in the late 50s and early 60s, I'm more than certain it was crunk up a notch. Because this was during the time where this was peak of Jim Crow. In order not to stick out like a sore thumb and be noticed truly as a white man, he had a friend of his, Sterling Williams, teach him the ins and the outs of being black. The thing that sticks out to me the most about this is the fact that Mr. Griffin wanted his skin to be as dark as possible. That was the most interesting thing to me. Mr. Griffin goes about his journey and learns the ins and outs of being treated as a black man in the South and being treated, in his words, as a 10th class citizen. Everywhere he went, no matter the sentence, he was constantly outcasted, being called the N-word, being constantly accused of stealing, being treated as a complete idiot that didn't know anything. Two things the film highlighted, which was very interesting, unless I glanced over it, it wasn't in the book, but in the film, it was amazing to see. It was a little after the hour mark, so we're well into the film, and he hitches a ride with this white gentleman, and they're having a casual conversation, and the man asks Griffin somewhat a personal question, and you can see Mr. Griffin become completely defensive and begin to get outraged answering the questions when the white guy was only trying to be a nice human being. The other instance was he was on the beach and this young girl was building a sand castle and he went over there to offer her something to help her with her sand castle. And she sat there and embraced his friendliness until her mother seen and completely panicked. I love that that was put there to show the aspect that we believe to be true. Racism is something that is taught. Throughout his journey, the frustration started to set in. It was plenty of times he wanted to quit his mission in order to go back to being a white man. Griffin stopped taking his medication to lighten his skin back to normal, to his color, and visit the first place he visited as a white man. He noticed how instantly he was treated with respect, with generosity, and with warmth. Griffin said he came to the conclusion that both races don't understand one another at all and they just tolerate each other. 
And what's needed is something to bridge the separation gap, which is an amazing assumption. Because even in 2023, I feel like that's a huge issue still. All the races just not understanding one another. The one thing that made me proud as a black man in America when it came to reading the book and seeing the film was the way black people in the community stuck together throughout hardships. Like letting complete strangers from other towns who were black stay in their homes so they'd be safe at night. Doing their best to take up for one another no matter the backlash. I thank Mr. Griffin for his courage because his book and his film offered a different perspective to America when it came to the sufferings of black America and how there's inequalities that are prominent in society as it was back in that day and time. I feel personally people truly don't understand the issues of being black in America, being wrongly labeled and judged before you're even born without being understood. I feel like because of cancel culture and social media, we as a society have gotten further away from these core things that would, in my opinion, help us evolve as people. I feel the small majority of the white race are trying to be understanding, but are constantly being shut down from the decisions white people before them have made, and also with black people. I feel the majority of us don't know our history and we pick and choose things in order to fit an agenda. I see it all the time where they try to find the smallest thing in the entire world to make that racist when indeed there's real racism that the majority of black people are scared to truly face. I think the book should be read along with other black history literature in order to offer that different perspective. One thing I learned from reading the book and watching the movie is to emphasize redemptive possibilities of love, kindness, and tolerance, goodwill, and positive emotions, rather than anger and violence, are the most effective catalysts of social change.